I always knew that I needed life insurance, but I kept putting it off. Then I found the Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Plan. If you're between 50 and 80, acceptance is guaranteed, regardless of your health history. Visit GerberLifeFamily.com to get your free personalized quote. Hello, hello, and welcome to Investigator Podcast. I'm your host, Chad, alongside my beautiful wife, Sherry. Hope everyone is doing fantastic out there this evening. How are you doing tonight, Sherry? I'm doing fabulous, since I know that we're sleeping with China. <laughs> Say what? I was just <laughs> listening to that song. She's sleeping with somebody, but pretending it's that guy. Oh, I have no idea what you're talking <laughs> I about. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, uh, <laughs> hope everyone is doing fantastic out there this evening. It is 7.30 p.m. on 7.30, 2022, <laughs> uh, here on the East Coast of the United States, here in South Carolina. Uh, we thank each and every one of you guys for listening, yes, uh, subscribing, yes, yes. following us, supporting us around the world. We appreciate it so, so, so very much. Yeah, and Chad was talking about, I mean, we are getting some subscriptions already, and we are out here on our truth world yes thank you guys and we are gonna like publicly publicly thank you yeah for sure um yeah so for what for for people that don't know what she's talking about our truth world order members only uh paid platform we are getting a lot of members and we definitely appreciate each and every one of you we've got a lot of awesome stuff for you guys planned we are very excited to introduce some some video content we're going to be bringing there some some new podcast episodes some giveaways very soon so we are very, very uh, excited about what is uh, in the future for truthworldorder.com. You guys can go and sign up there if you want to support us. If you want just uh, – it's almost kind of like backstage – not backstage, but like in our lives access. You're going to get to know us on a more personal level. You're actually going to be a part of where this podcast goes in the future. You're going to be able to live stream, hang out with us, um, and just help us brainstorm and figure out – You know, and I think with, with you guys' help – you know, it's going to go so much further. We're going to know so much more. We we always get messages from people. Oh yeah, and um, they're like, and, and there's there's so many smart people that listen mm-hmm. to us, and and so we want to be able for for our you know tight knit group on Truth World Order to be able to help us to kind of shape and and mold this podcast to what it's going to be in the future. And um, and so you guys are supporting us. We're going to make sure we support you. And so we appreciate that. And we're going to on the next episode, we're going to thank some of the members and yes. we're going to try to do a shout out um, ever so often as, as much as we can. for That those reminds well. me when we're doing <clears throat> truck simulator, we had this little shout out like cheerleader it was like, yay! Oh, every time somebody <clears throat> liked our page or whatever. So I'm going to say, yeah, yay that was, to that you. Was a, that was a <laughs> drunken time. <laughs> But anyways, guys, tonight um, we're going to be talking about the U.S.-China war possibility. This is a very serious episode. 
I think that this episode is something that there's breaking news as we're sitting here on July the 30th, 2022 at 730 p.m. There's breaking news coming out right now. Uh, We don't know where this is going to lead, but tonight's podcast, what we're going to try to do is just let you guys in on what is going on. Why is there a U.S.-China war threat now? Uh, And if in the scenario that the war were to actually happen, who would win? Who has the advantage? Uh, Does China have the advantage? Does the United States have the advantage? Um, And kind of where does that sit? So let's get into this podcast. So Nancy Pelosi is basically making a trip to Asia where she's going to be stopping at, I guess, especially U.S. ally countries. So one of the things that is been speculated is that Nancy Pelosi is going to stop in Taiwan, which obviously for those of you that don't know, uh, the United States as well as NATO has feared that China will invade Taiwan. And if they do invade Taiwan, then this is basically going to be almost very similar to like a Russia invading Ukraine thing to where they're going to try to take the land back. China sees Taiwan as their land. They want to take it back. And so that's where we're at right now. And with Nancy Pelosi's trip going to Asia and then the rumors that she's going to stop in Taiwan, China started making threats. Yeah, they are not happy campers right now. No. So China launches live fire drills off Taiwan with U.S. carrier group nearby as Pelosi's plane uh, at the moment is en route to Asia. This is this is breaking news. This is something that is just coming on. Mm -hmm. So her plane Um, actually left. Yeah. Headed to Asia. According to prior comments from President Biden, though, the Pentagon wants House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to cancel her visit to Taiwan. But now pending her possible arrival in Taipei, the U.S. military has moved a Navy strike group into the South China Sea, led by the USS Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier. Uh, The USS Reagan left a port of call in Singapore and is now patrolling waters near China. With Beijing flexing its own military muscle by launching fresh naval exercises near the self-ruled island, and more worrisomely, issuing threats that the PLA military is on standby um, to respond with forceful measures if needed. Turkey's EHA media outlet on Saturday is circulating unverified video purporting to show large U.S. warplane formation flyovers over the South China Sea with destroyers below it. Um, and there is actually a video <clears throat> on the EHAA News, or EHA News, if you guys go to Twitter, look up EHA News, you'll find the video. Uh, it basically shows warplanes of the U.S. Navy are flying near Taiwan um, with uh, all these harsh statements coming from China to continue. Uh, is Essentially, the United States is now showing their military might as well as China is doing the same. This is a very dangerous right. game to and, be playing on for either country. Yeah, and I just wonder, would we be showing our power if they would not have, have threatened us with Pelosi going over there? Would no, it, would I mean, it be we, the we same would, thing? We would have, I mean, if Pelosi, if we knew Pelosi was still going to Taiwan, especially with all of the just turmoil between China and Taiwan and the tension, mm-hmm. we would still have strike groups and all that over there, but there's probably a much a heightened high sense alert, of, yeah, yeah and, and also the United States wants to show power by just being there. They're doing similar to what China's doing, show, showing military might. Um, but like I said, this is a dangerous game to play. It and is. sadly, it's, and it's, it's something that I'm worried about because of who we have in office, this administration. Obviously, you guys, if you've followed this podcast enough, I mean, it's, it's not just this administration. There's so many administrations around the world that I guess you wouldn't want to necessarily be involved in a war with right now. But especially this one. I mean, <laughs> you know, this administration... It's like who is really in charge? Because obviously the president right now in the United States is not in charge of anything. Uh, the vice president's literally in charge of nothing. <laughs> and, you know, if you guys have ever watched the movies about the wartime situations or, you know, extremely volatile world events, if you watch any of those movies, that really happens. I mean, think about, for example, when Obama was, uh, you know, they, they kind of led him into the war room or the situation room. And that was when they said, hey, we have intel. We know where Osama bin Laden is right now. So they, you know, Obama and all of his generals went in the war room. They were, you know, step by step going through this process. They were going to send Navy SEALs. 
they were going to do this. And Obama and his team, they made the calls right then and there along with the generals. Mm -hmm. And they were actively in real time uh, monitoring the situation and also guiding the situation. And this is something you need a president for, for especially certain actions that is going to possibly either put your country at peril if, you know, given, Mm -hmm. you know, hey, well, China just struck two of our carriers. What do we do, Mr. President? You know, so imagine being Mm. in a war room with President Biden. Oh, what? Huh? What are you? Who's we're at war with who? (laughs) We're at war with uh, South America? Which treaty did I sign? Yeah, wait, what? We're at war? Wait a minute, wait. I didn't even know we're over there. And why are you calling me president? (laughs) Um, But anyways, so imagine just uh, President Biden being there or Kamala Harris for that matter. And they're like, hey, what do we do? I mean, just imagine. Well, do you just jibber jabber, but the blah 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 blah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah. So it's not a good time. Not trying to be political, but I mean, but, just think about it. But really, if you think about this too, the reason why this is happening is because our administration is in office. I I know I bring up Trump a lot, but China didn't start shit <laughs> with America when well, Trump was there. Neither did Russia. Neither did anyone. Yeah, nobody did because they knew Trump meant business, and he meant it. And he was not going to be threatened by anyone. Like, go ahead and do that to Trump and see what happens. And put him in office and see what happens. That does not fly with him. No. And with the administration. Well, you got to have strong leadership yeah. no matter what. Yeah. And th- when you have weak leaders, other leaders from other countries, they know and they're going to play off of it. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the same exact thing as a wounded uh, pack animal. Mm-hmm. And when when other you know dominant species of animal, like, for example, if you have a wounded hyena, which, by the way, hyenas are powerful people. They oh, should, yeah. or people, they're powerful animals. They mm-hmm. should be. Mm-hmm. But if they're wounded, then all of the other predators are going to pounce. And that's exactly what we're seeing here in Biden's administration. Mm-hmm. We saw it with Russia. Now we're seeing it with China. We're going to see it with anyone. I mean, literally the day that Trump came out of office, North Korea was threatening nuclear mm-hmm. war again. They just recently threatened us a week ago. It's like all of the usual suspects are back at it. And they're even getting more ballsy now that more than ever before. I mean... It's a literally, like you said, it is a wounded animal mm-hmm. uh, in office as the president right now is what they're looking at. The United States they see as a wounded animal. You know, the great and powerful lion that we always were mm-hmm. now has one or two legs missing and has been shot and is just barely surviving. Right. And we're supposed to be the strongest of the world. Yeah. Well, That's laugh out loud. We are not. So Pelosi is currently en route over the Pacific for a scheduled tour of Asia, including stops in Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore. Um, and with the Josh or with the Washington Post, Josh Rogan on Friday reporting that Taiwan stopover is expected to happen during the early part of the trip based on diplomatic resources. So all eyes are on Pelosi's flight path after it was days ago revealed that Taiwan was listed tentative as part of her itinerary. Now, Pelosi uh, has been found on Flight Tracker, which is, I think, the dumbest thing you could possibly do. <laughs> yeah, why would you even they, put yourself on Flight Tracker? Yeah, the Flight Tracker app. They <laughs> literally found her airplane, and it is pictured here. It is currently over uh, the Pacific, headed towards Asia, 32,000 feet, 472 knots. That is a Boeing C-40C, which is essentially a Boeing 737, but they, they name them a little different for military purposes. And... <clears throat> So she is en route. Um, It is expected that if she goes through with the Taiwan visit, Pelosi would at some point in Asia board a military transport plane, like with U.S. fighter jet escorts. Um, This possibility is what has infuriated Beijing. Mm -hmm. Now, so to make that clear, she would likely uh, board a military transport pilot airplane or transport plane that would then be escorted by fighter jets which would be United States fighter jets mm-hmm. over pretty much all around their territory. Right. Um, and this is what China is pretty pissed about. So Chinese state media, for example, has been issuing loud warnings saying the PLA military um, would have the right to intercept and deter any armed jet escort, deeming this akin to an invasion and violation of China's sovereignty. So... They're they're essentially saying they're going to intercept. They've already threatened many threats, which we're going to get into. Um, but, yeah. And right, there's I've actually 50,000 people tracking Nancy Pelosi's airplane. That's so funny. And I'm going to ask a dumb question right now. But is part of the reason that China's mad that she's flying? I know that they want Taiwan or whatever. But 
Are we going into their airspace to get to Taiwan? <clears throat> um, I'm not positive about that. I don't. I don't see this. Here, here's part of the problem too. China believes Taiwan is theirs already, right? right. Even though it's not, and um, so I don't know that we would technically go. I'm sure probably somehow we would go in their airspace, but I don't know that either. But I don't. I, I don't. I doubt we would go in the airspace because that would technically. There's no way in hell we're going to let Chinese people come into our airspace unless we right. you know, invited right. them. Right. So, I mean, if we're not going into their airspace, <clears throat> why, why could they threaten us like that? I don't know. Well, they, they anybody can threaten anybody. The, the, the point is that they do not want any of our fighters, any of our anything military anywhere around them or Taiwan. And, you know... It's it's similar to what probably the United States would do in a in a similar situation, I would guess. So um, Chinese foreign ministry officials continue to warn that all options, including military, are on the table given Beijing is inter, um, interpreting the potential Pelosi visit as a strong signal to pro-independence forces, as well as interference and a violation of the One China principle. Um, and so basically China is saying, look, you you guys showing up to Taiwan is basically saying that you are pro-independence of Taiwan, mm -hmm. which they are which, completely against because they yeah. are going to make Taiwan China again, which but is they they're going to invade. But they already know we're allies with Taiwan. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> so uh, get over it, China. <clears throat> so Beijing is further warning that the House Speaker's visit to the island, which would mark a first in 25 years, would actually ratchet the potential for misunderstandings or miscalculations. Um, the latest China remarks on counter and Pelosi's possible visit to Taiwan shows highest level of warning. All options, including military, including all out war. Um, and so this is something that is, is definitely getting very serious. As CNN previewed, even I don't even like to even quote CNN because they're <laughs> a freaking joke. Um, China's PLA Navy is holding live fire exercises in the waters off of Taiwan. And uh, so they're saying China is planning to conduct live fire exercises on Saturday in waters near uh, Pingtan Island or Fujian province, which is opposite the self-governed island of Taiwan. Um, the Pingtan Maritime Safety Administration issued a navigation warning about the drills late Thursday local time, prohibiting all ships from entering the waters near the island and southwestern province of Fujian. Uh, it said the live fire training missions would take place from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Pelosi flies to the region, the region, the U.S. and Chinese militaries are engaged in rival maneuvering in the seas below. So China and U.S. are just out there in the in the seas playing cat and mouse. Mm -hmm. They're playing like you go, you go ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead, fuck with us. I mean, that's literally what's I happening. I mean, it right is, now. and it's just <clears throat> so it's it's very high stakes. And 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 so you know, I have I have two opinions just so far. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we've talked about this, and it's I have like opinions too. You know, do you? Do you uh -huh. do you go through with do you go through with the trip or do you do you cancel the trip? Mm -hmm. You know, number two, you know, I would say and, and, and so I, my answer to that is I don't know, because, you know, if I'm anyone that has any sense right now with this administration in the United States, I would say cancel the damn trip. <laughs> we don't need any. Right now, we need no reason know, to be in a war. I know. But since she tentatively scheduled this trip and she's the one that put this on her agenda that she's going to Taiwan. She better stick it out now because if she doesn't... You're going to look like a bitch. Yeah, we're going to be their bitch. We're going to yeah. be China's bitch and we can't do that. I get it. You know, she better wear some so helmets you, and uniforms and have a, a, a backpack where it has a, what's it called? A parachute. She yeah. better have that shit ready. Well, do you think... That was on her itinerary. Yeah. That's on her. But do you think that so far, do you think that she will visit Taiwan? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. She's got to follow through now. I mean, I can't now. stand Nancy Pelosi I, at all. Well, whatever. But the point is, if so, we're going to put it on our <laughs> itinerary and we're saying it's tentative, and then you're getting threats from, you know, China, yeah. you got to stand up to their threats and say, <clears throat> uh, no, 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 no. That's not going to happen. We're in the United States of America, and we will go to any country we want to go that are our allies. Mm-hmm. They have to stand up or we are going to look like um, pussycats. <laughs> yeah. Now, so here's the thing. Um, their satellite images are showing the arrival of the U.S. aircraft carrier strike group led by nuclear-powered aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan into the South China Sea en route to Taiwan Strait. So, 
And here's the thing. It's kind of like, if, if you think of it this way, like Taiwan, China in their mind right now already thinks and believes Taiwan is theirs again. Mm-hmm. Like they have not done the invasion yet, but it, it but it, for them, it's good as theirs. Right. And so they're looking at this situation like you are getting, because right now we can visit Taiwan. We can, uh, you know, go up to the Gulf of Taiwan with our strike groups and our carriers and all this stuff. And so they're looking at this like you are coming on our land because in their mind, they already think it's theirs. It's their land. Well, already. guess what? They're on our land all over the place in America. Yeah, buying all of our farmland. <laughs> they're land. buying all of our farmland. Yeah, but China's not that stupid. <laughs> See, that's the thing. They're not. They're not that dumb to ever let that shit happen in China. I mean, that's like us saying, hey, we're going to go over there and build all kinds of shit in China. Or in Taiwan. Never happened. Yeah, we're going to buy we're gonna buy all this land in Taiwan, which is small or whatever. But, you know, that's what they're doing to us. And we're not threatening anybody. We're allowing them to buy our land. Yeah. Like dumb butts, <clears throat> but um, seriously. So when the USS Reagan strike group entered South China Sea, uh, there were widespread reports that Chinese destroyers began following closely behind, mirroring, and monitoring U.S. Navy movements in the waters. Um, there's actually, they, I mean, they literally have up-to-date satellite imagery. I think it's crazy that we actually have companies that, that pay the money to buy access to real-time satellites. I mean, hell, I mean, look at Flight Simulator, for example. I mean, it's, it's, it's like mm-hmm. you know everything that's going on in the world if you want to know. Right. And, so um, you're saying why is it insane? Because we're paying well, no, I mean, somebody or what? Well, no, I mean, there's just multiple companies that can access real-time satellite yeah, data. Right. And they're literally they're posting pictures of where the USS strike groups are and where the China strike groups are. I mean, they're showing it real-time happening as it's happening. Right. And it's, I'm it's, sure it's any technology satellite. we've never, yeah. ever had before. And I'm sure satellites are out there that, you know, that helps with all that. Elon Musk satellites. Anyway. Oh, yeah. But Chinese Navy warships are chasing the USS Ronald Reagan in the South China Sea, basically. So they're, I mean, they're just following him. So this, you know, and here's, here's part of the problem, too, is, you know, we think of this as, well, nothing's going to happen or nothing. Anytime you get China and, and strike groups from the U.S. that close to each other, you know, these are command staffs that are put together. These are, we don't know who may take something as a threat. If something happens, anything mm, right. could set off a war. Right. Anything. Somebody could accidentally set off a flare gun. That would be Sherry. <laughs> now you, would Shut actually, up, now you, you would actually set off a damn torpedo. <laughs> you probably would. Oh, what I is this not. button? Click. <laughs> Shit. Well, thanks. You just got us some World War Three. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you were fired. <laughs> You're fired from your damn position. What is your position, by the way? Why are you on our ship? <laughs> I don't know. I thought this was a cruise ship. Oh, we're ship. media. I thought this was a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Chinese pundits and others have lately been circulating um I don't know what uh Archduke Franz Ferdinand memes suggesting that if something goes wrong. The provocative trip could be what sparks the next world war pitting nuclear armed superpowers, China and the U.S. against each other. And perhaps, guess what? Also Russia. Oh, yeah. that'd be interesting. Yeah, because Russia and China are like two and one. Yeah. So They're given, a two for one. And you know, obviously with the Russia-Ukraine and the Moscow-Washington standoff in Eastern Europe. Buy you one, know, get it's, one It's free. just a whole thing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And so while prior U.S. media reporting indicated Pelosi's Taiwan visit would come next month, meaning August, it means entirely possible that Pelosi could suddenly show up meeting with the Taiwanese president um, as soon as Sunday, July 31st, or into Monday or Tuesday. So it could be tomorrow, it could be the next day, it could be the next day. Well, they could be sneaky and have the Taiwan president meet her. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't think they would do that. (laughs) So meanwhile, China's state-run Global Times is posting an ominous message of don't say we didn't warn you. So they recently just posted this uh, earlier today, mm-hmm. and it's the it's the state run media. You know, in China, everything's state run, which is essentially what it is in the United States. They just don't yeah. say it's state run, yeah, but it is. Yeah, we're not quite as communist as China yet. But, but we are. We're, we're just getting there. we are. It's we're just not there. as provocative. Exactly. It's like in China, it's like this is the way it is, bitch. Like uh, yeah. you know, but it's U.S. is like no, honey. no, it's not tyranny. No, mm-hmm. don't worry about it. Yeah. But it is. Um, so if you were Nancy Pelosi right now, like, Hold what on, would you be? Okay, sorry. No, no I was just going to say, the, the message that says, don't say we didn't warn you. I mean, you ha- you have to understand, like, they're... That's our th- real message. Well, yeah, they've already, number one, they've already threatened to shoot down Pelosi's plane. Yeah. So. Um, they have 
threatened to all kinds of things. Now they're they're playing cat and mouse with our strike groups. But I mean, you know, don't say we didn't warn you. It's like how like are you it's prepared blatant, to do something? Blatant in our face. Obviously, they're prepared to do something. Yeah, and I'm but just saying, start if shit. you're Nancy Pelosi that has a freezer full of Ben and Jerry's ice cream, how would you be feeling right now on these jets, on these planes over here? <laughs> She's got to be, like, freaking out right now, you know? Yeah. So to, to that, it says, don't say we didn't warn you. Endless warned a top-level think tank forum that open options and military and comprehensive countermeasures ranging from economy and diplomacy from China will wait. Um, it will wait if Pelosi gambles to visit Taiwan Island. Um, so some more worrisome signs is, you know, the fact that don't want to sound, you know, if you don't want to sound alarmist, but it's notable that this time in the U.S.-China tension, three of China's largest, newest roll-on, roll-off civilian ferries appear to be off their normal routes and are in or have moved south towards the Taiwan Strait. All three are associated with the Chinese military. Mm. So these are um, they're ferries. They're ferries, which would mean that you could bring a lot of different people or machinery or military weapons across. Yes, and and like I said, they are they are all moving towards the Taiwan Strait. So this is something too that you got to think about. These are these are there's something that's moving a lot of this stuff, and these ferries are are used to move uh, typically vehicles, people, so right. on and so forth. I don't know how big the ferries are. But the reality is that obviously they are owned by the PLA, which is the essentially the military of China, mm-hmm. and uh, they are being they're off their normal routes and they're actually heading to the Taiwan Strait. So, which is also just so happens to be where the strike group is heading towards. So, this is a this is a very uh, fast moving thing. Um, now, this also. You know, as official social media accounts of the PLA military also promoted war preparedness messages, also picked up in international press. So this whole thing is right now happening. Right now. I mean, it's... Right in real time. Real time, it's happening. We don't know what is going to be the case. I, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know... Pelosi, she'll probably visit Taiwan because she could give a damn about whether there's a World War Three, and and I'm not like I said, I'm not saying I'm I'm one of the biggest patriots. I love wearing my USA shirts. I love uh, our country. It, as you touch it right I now, <laughs> yeah, I have a USA shirt on right now. I am a patriot. I I love what our country can be, but you because can... it's not no longer the country we came from right. or or what everyone was so proud of. But the reality is, it's too, is MAGA. we have to understand <laughs> what I said. It should be MAGA. Well, I don't give a damn about MAGA or not, Trump. I well, mean, I'm look, not I, even I don't care. It's Trump, but I'm saying we have to make it great again. It is not great. Oh my god, this is not a Trump podcast, though, Sherry. I'm <laughs> you, sorry, you're saying but... MAGA. I know, I get it, I get it. But what I'm saying is, I don't give a damn if it's Trump or whoever. I just want a president to give a shit about our country. I mean, like we we don't have a administration right now in the United States that gives a damn about our country, our freedoms, our rights, and I know many of you in Canada and Australia and wherever you feel the same way about whoever is probably in office now. And so many of these leaders in your countries have something in common, which is a lot of them went to the Young Leaders Foundation and the World Economic Forum. They're all about the new Great Reset and the thirty by thirty agenda. And this administration now is no different. You know, Biden obviously is way too damn old to have went to any young anything <laughs> leaders. Um, but the reality is, is like he's he's he probably went to the uh, decrepit leaders <laughs> the foundation C-Nile? world economic. Well, I'm Forum. just saying, I'm not bringing Trump up again. But, but you are. You, but do you think he would have been found anywhere near those meetings? Heck, no. Who knows? Though? I'm just. But saying. listen, but listen, Sherry. We don't know. Look, here's the thing. We don't know. Chad, he pulled out of anything that was... Yeah, you're right. Anything that had anything to do bad with America, he pulled out of. I know that. I get it. I'm just saying, you know, I'm not... Look, I like Trump, but and I think he did great for us. But I'm also saying, like, I don't also like everything he did. And I'm just... I'm kind of... I'm. But you're never going to like somebody 100%. No, I'm but, not. But okay, I, well, I guess I guess him pushing the vaccine and all that okay, stuff kind of. Let me ask, you, let me ask you a question right now. Who did you vote for? 
Biden or Trump? Well, of course Trump. And who would you Are buy? You kidding me? Who would you vote for today? Well, of course Trump. Okay then. If it's between, if it's between, <laughs> but it, but if it was between like DeSantis and Trump, it'd probably be Trump. I mean, I mean DeSantis, it probably would be for me. But I don't know. But who DeSantis knows? is going. He's using all of Trump's values for his platform. Well, I get that. <laughs> But I mean, DeSantis has done a lot of good things for. Um, oh, absolutely! I love him for Florida. But I'm—he's making Florida great again based on Trump's, uh, tr- all Trump stuff, achievements. Yeah, or his agendas. He's he's sticking with those agendas. Trump's the way. The reason why he is the way he is today. Maybe you're right. I mean, maybe you're right. He's a prodigy, I guess, of Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Possibly. All Sorry. right. Do not burp because you. No, I got. No, it's like a, it's like a heartburn you got, thing. You give me a look when I drink. <laughs> so um, <laughs> what? Nothing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm I'm confused. What you're saying now? Um. So who would win the U.S. China war? I mean, who would win, and how would it start? Obviously, we've talked about how it would start, but who would possibly win this? Um, if China chooses to attack uh, the island of Taiwan, or if something happens now with the Nancy Pelosi visit, um, the United States could be helpless to stop it. By the time po- uh, People's Liberation Army launches its third volley of missiles at the island of Beijing, um, at the island Beijing considers a breakaway province, which is Taiwan, uh, the U.S. could be just learning of the attack. And in a matter of minutes, Beijing's rocket force could cripple Taiwan's military, infrastructure, and ports. Yet if China wanted to conquer Taiwan, the outcome could be different. Possibly completely different. Um, So China would have to launch an amphibious invasion, deploying troops along its beaches as the first step in a march towards the capital of Taipei. Despite its 1.9 million strong army compared to Taiwan's cohort of (laughs) 150,000, The the, uh, the task of taking its island neighbor and holding it is a mammoth military challenge. So Taiwan's foreign minister, Joseph Wu, said on June 3rd that Taipei did not anticipate a conflict was going to break out anytime soon, but we are trying to get ourselves ready. If there is going to be a war between Taiwan and China, we will fight the war ourselves, he said. If other countries come to our aid, that will be highly appreciated, but we will fight the war for our own survival and for our own future. In this scenario, the U.S. and its allies could respond by conducting airlifts to Taiwan. The U.S. could also use submarines as stealth aircraft to attack China's shipping fleet in the Indian Ocean to cripple its economic lifelines in a time of crisis. Um, The divergence of the two Taiwan scenarios, a Chinese military attack or an invasion, says a lot about the relative military power of the U.S. and China, itself a barometer of the strength of the two superpowers. Um, and this is, quote, I told President Z that we'll maintain a strong military presence in the Indo-Pacific, uh, just as we do with NATO in Europe, not to start conflict, but to prevent conflict, U.S. Joe Biden said. And so um, so this is a big thing. The, the Taiwan-China deal is, is something huge that is, you know, if, if this alone doesn't spark something with the Pelosi trip, the Taiwan thing, obviously, we've been talking about for right. a while. But you got to think of the problem with America, where we stand right now. We're basically already fighting a war against R- Russia through Ukraine. We've got a lot of money going over there, a lot of weapons, a lot of military on the borders around there. So we pretty much are trying to fight a war through Ukraine, but we're not fighting the war of Ukraine. Yeah, it's is. a proxy war. So we're over here. And, you know, Russia is a super powerhouse, whatever. Now, China is over on the other side saying, we're going to mess with Taiwan. And if they do that, then we're supposed to go over there and support them and take all of our weapons, our money, our people. Like, it's splitting up. You know, you can't. It's like putting all of your eggs in one basket. Our eggs are getting spread out. And when you spread out the eggs like that, you're kind of screwed. Well, yeah, but also, yeah, you're right. And um, you're true. But the thing is, is like, parts of me wonder if this Pelosi trip is is literally a an, an instigation of, like, are we trying to get China to start some shit? But why would we want to do that right now? Well, I don't know why. But we also don't know why, you know, and, and I think many other countries are asking the same thing, but why do we feel like, as American citizens, that our own government is trying to destroy our own country from within? No, it doesn't make sense. 
But also you have to understand that if you cripple nations, especially the most powerful, in any way possible, it does set up the scenario for a new world order and a, and a one world government much easier. And so, you know, I don't, I, I would love to know how other presidents that are powerful and strong presidents would have handled this. But I don't think we would have probably even been in this situation if we had strong presidents. Exactly. It would so. not have happened in the first place. And that's what I'm saying. It's important to always have a strong president. You cannot just put up a, a weak president that is a puppet of whoever else is in charge of whatever else is going on because we have no president right now. Yeah. Um, we right. have a guy that gets up there and reads. He's a hollow body. Yeah, he, he reads uh, quote, end quote, quote. End quote. Yeah, there's actually videos out there that show Biden when he is, when he's doing a little better, um, it, it, it'll have his pupils, they'll zoom in on him, and they're like dilated as hell, because they're probably giving, giving him, him some Adderall. kind of something. <laughs> they're giving him something like crazy. To like focus at the yeah, screen. To something. And then he's like, um, end of parentheses. And yeah. our country is end of parentheses. <laughs> or end of quote is what Or end says, of quote. Yeah. <laughs> So today's China. Okay, so let's let's break it down a little bit. Today's China's military spending is the second highest in the world after the United States, and it continues to rise. Its military budget is greater than that combined of the expenditure of India, Russia, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, according to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. The Chinese defense budget reached three hundred twenty-four billion this year. It has been growing by six to eight percent each year for the past five years. But according to the Defense Intelligence Agency. Um, U.S. spending rem- remains miles ahead of China at $759 billion. So China's budget is about $324 billion. The U.S. is $759 billion. Um, China had 55 small warships in 2020. Oh, we could, we could fly. This is your summer. That means Six Flags in the taste of an ice-cold Coca-Cola. We're talking thrilling coasters, delicious burgers, yes. real moments together, and this. <sighs> Coke is summer refreshment when you need it most, so you can hop on another ride or race down a slide at the water park. Six Flags and Coca-Cola. Come make it yours. Visit SixFlags.com slash Coke to save up to $20 on passes, plus daily tickets starting at $34.99. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino online. I was only playing for fun, so winning was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's favorite free online social casino. You too could have the chance to win life-changing cash prizes. Absolutely anybody could be like Mary. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumboCasino.com and play for free now. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of the winner. More than double the number it had five years ago. Six large amphibious vessels have been launched, three since 2015, and a third aircraft carrier, larger than its predecessors, will soon be completed. Um, so there's a, there's someone from the International Institute of Strategic Studies in Beijing was intent on achieving uh, primacy in the waters that surround China. China is also developing the capabilities needed to support military operations at range. China's focus on its region would give it local advantage in any clash with the U.S. So, um, Oriana Mastro of Stanford University has testified that China dedicates all its resources to planning and preparing for a contingency in East Asia, while the U.S. has additional responsibilities in Middle East, Europe, and worldwide, and especially now in Ukraine. Okay, but why does it matter if we even have a budget right now if we're just printing our own money? Well, it does matter. It it matters because of the spending we're putting towards our military. Um, If a conflict were to erupt in East Asia, then the Chinese military is closer to on par with the United States. Um, China's military buildup is making a difference. Only a decade ago, the U.S. would have easily dominated the Chinese military in almost any scenario, says the Australian National University professor Stephen Furong. I think the U.S. now accepts it may lose a conflict, at least at the conventional level with China. Um, So the geographic focus is decisive. The U.S. Air Force boasts nearly 2,300 warplanes in service, with another 14 or right about 1,400 aircraft in use for the U.S. Navy and Marines. Mm -hmm. But all the U.S. airplanes cannot be dispatched to China's coastline, certainly not in the six to eight minutes it could take for the DF-11A rocket to cross a 130-kilometer-wide Taiwan Strait to its target. 
China's 1,264 warplanes, meanwhile, are based in China. It's a similar story with troops. The U.S. 1.38 million active personnel are better trained and equipped than many of their 1.9 million China peers. Yeah, but we're all over the place. But getting them in place and in mm-hmm. time to take on China would be a crucial task. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you look at straight the numbers, the United States, they spend $759 billion uh, as far as their military. China's about 249. Uh, troops, we got 1.3 million in comparison to China's 1.9. So we're not really that far off as far as troops go. Over there. Yeah, when it comes to them. Um, combat airplanes, we have 3,722. China has 1,264. But I have to mention, because I know this, our combat planes are way better than theirs. Well. Because I have compared them. Yeah, we have. But, well, I'm not going to say way better because they well, do. They're, well, they're better. They're, they're, but there's been some comparisons recently that say the F-22 or F-35 might might actually lose in a battle with their new fighters um especially but china's been still in all of our i mean they've been yeah, still they in steal all of our technology, technology and yeah. then they improve upon it mm-hmm. so it's it's you know china and russia you know they both have incredible hacking skills they have teams that are dedicated to stealing technology from especially us and that's one of the things you know a lot i, I don't think the united states yes we have hackers yes we have people that do shit like that but i mean we've always kind of been out in front as far as the right. m- military technology, weaponry technology, and yet China, China and Russia have spent shit tons of time, energy, and money on finding ways to steal our to stuff. To recreate our stuff and make it better. Yeah. Instead of starting <clears throat> from ground zero. Yeah, so, I agree um, with that. So China has about 1,250 ground-launched ballistic missiles and ground-launched cruise missiles. U.S. cruise missiles are not available as far as numbers go. We have no idea, but I'm sure it's a shit done. Um, the United States, we have about 1,800 satellites in orbit. China has 412. So there's a huge difference there. Navy ships, we got 249. China has 350. So China does have a little more Navy ships than we do. Nuclear warheads, this is huge. Uh, we have 5,800 nuclear warheads. China has 320. <laughs> now, here's the thing. It doesn't but matter that one. much. Yeah, it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> Because what are China's 320 nuclear warheads? Are they the hypersonic variant like Russia has? Mm -hmm. I mean, the crazy thing is, is that we, the United States, tested a hypersonic nuclear warhead, well, hypersonic long-range missile, which would carry a nuclear warhead, and it was a failed test. Then, of course, like two weeks later, we come out and say, oh, we have a very successful test for a hypersonic missile. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it's true or not, we don't know. I mean... I would like to think that the United States is not that far behind on hypersonic missiles. Like, and Russia has this shit. They have hypersonic missiles they're using in Ukraine. And they're not nuclear. They're just blowing shit up. And they're going nine times the speed of sound. I mean, and if if Russia can achieve this, and and I guarantee you China has Oh, yeah. This. And I'm sure they're probably sharing information with each other. Because to me, they're like the superpower allies together. It's Russia and China against everyone else. Really is yeah, what and it I'll, is. And I don't even know that I believe the statistic on 320 nuclear warheads China has. I just don't see why they what, wouldn't you think have they're prob- probably hiding them? Yeah, or something. I don't know. I just, I don't think there's only 320, but who knows. Um, now, there are, are, are less quantifiable aspects as well. The last time Chinese troops saw direct action was in 1979, which means the last time they were in war, um, when China launched a costly month-long war against Vietnam to teach it a lesson in retaliation to Hainal's actions in Southeast Asia. Now, the difference is the U.S. military has been racking up decades of infield experience, mostly recently with deployments in Afghanistan, Iraq, Middle East, and, um, and they're costly. And it's not just the Middle East, and it's not just Afghanistan and Iraq. We are at war with places that most of American citizens or the world don't even know about, like Yemen. and mm-hmm. I mean, even though it kind of is the Middle East. But what I'm saying is places that are, we don't even, no one even knows that we're at war and we have killed shit tons of people. For no reason, mm-hmm. in some cases, probably. But anyways. Um, what? China is aware of this gap its army is now deploying troops to africa for peacekeeping missions that give first-hand experience in conflict zones the structure of the military is also different rocket uh rockets figure heavily in beijing's arsenal the 100,000 strong rocket force was made a separate branch of the people's liberation army in 2015 
So the PLA missiles forces are central to China's efforts to deter and counter third-party intervention in a regional conflict. The U.S. believes China has about 2,000 mid-range missiles in place, which could ward off the U.S. Navy in a conflict. China's nuclear weapons are estimated uh, between 200 to 350, and a mere 5% of the United States arsenal, but potentially enough to deter broader conflict through the prospect of mutual destruction. And that's really the way it is. Well, it doesn't matter how many you have. Is it? Does it matter if it's going to get there and it's going to cause the damage you want it to cause? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Are these 350, say they have 350, 320, say they have 100. You know, if you've got 100 or 300, it doesn't matter. If you have successfully tested and know how to properly get across the ocean, hypersonic missiles. You know, it doesn't matter how many you have. You only need about five. Yeah. You probably only really need one. depends on the technology, but you probably really only need one. I mean, you know, I I think, I think the way, and and here's the thing is what we're talking about. And actually we're going to have an episode on UFOs and aliens coming up this week because, uh, there's something I want to talk about that is a, a whole nother, I guess, aspect of the UFO aliens thing. And the reason I'm even talking about this is because we don't necessarily know what technology is out there mm-hmm. as far as we, we, we talk about nuclear like warheads. reverse technology. Well, maybe, is that what you're talking about? Possibly. But because I think a lot of things, if we have seen UFOs and we've learned from the UFOs, we've used refer, re, um, reverse technology reverse to, build, yeah. Yeah, to build some of the things that we have. Just like China, they could have had some, you know, something happening where they had UFO technology and use that to their benefit. And even if it's not that, say there's no such thing as UFOs, right? Let's take this for example. Oh my gosh, but there is. I know, but I'm saying, like, we just don't know how far advanced we are as a country as far as, I mean, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's advanced as like we've talked about the UFOs, like no. the, these objects that are going crazy insane speeds. Yeah. But these know, are also and, objects that are as, as small as like a ship you could not even fit a person in possibly. to as big as like or humongous things, yeah. ones. Yeah. But I mean, you know, we, we always talk about nuclear warheads, but we also don't really know. I mean, if, if all hell broke loose, and it's an all-out World War nuclear thing. You know, we're going to bring out whatever our craziest yeah. shit is. They're in and their... I think it would surprise people, whatever the hell we have. Mm-hmm. But it would it be too late? That's the thing. And I, and I think, you know, in, in, this, in this comparison with Russia and China and United States and all this shit, like, so many people tend to go towards the, I guess, well, who would win? Who has more weapons? Who has more warheads? Who has more ships? Who has more of this? What I want to ask is who has more defense? Who has the best mm-hmm. defense technology in the world? Because w- w- what is one place in right. this world that you think of? Just think about this for a minute. <clears throat> not Col- not against Colorado. nuclear. No, no. No, not against I'm talking about countries. Oh. What is one country around the world that has a system in place that Israel. really protects them? Yes, Israel. Which is the Iron Dome, mm-hmm. right? And the Iron Dome is incredible. And actually, we supplied that to Israel. We're the ones that have sent them money to even be able to do this. It has protected them from uh, rockets on a almost yearly, monthly basis. I mean, you know, 95, I don't don't know the numbers on this, so don't quote me. But like 90 to 95% of rockets that are shot into Israel are shot down. Mm -hmm. Their Iron Dome is insane. Now... If we supplied not only money and technology to build this system for Israel, like what what do you think the United States has, right? I mean, and I, and I know you guys from uh, Australia right now, and Canada, and Switzerland, Sweden, UK. You're thinking, well, what about us? And New Zealand. Yeah, but look, here's the thing: like right now, whoever the other end of a war is going to be it's is going to probably be us. United States. Yeah, yeah, it's us against them right now. And so you guys are just going to be in the flight path of these <laughs> yeah. hypersonic missiles yeah. that are going to either location. Now, now what I will say is that if Russia launched a nuclear warhead and or China, you know, um, th- the thing is, is they would probably just say fuck it and launch it to Europe and whoever else. But what I did hear recently as far as the Russia nuclear scenario, right? So if say that 
the main, from what I heard is, Putin would have to feel like he was about to die or his life was in danger uh, in terms of military action for him to say, you know what, let's launch a nuclear warhead. Yeah, when but he then has in nothing between, else, yeah, when he has nothing else to lose, he's. <clears throat> I mean, if he had nothing else to lose, he knows he's going to die. Why but, would he care if he started a nuclear but war? But here's the thing. In between Putin and the nuclear war happening, there are about 10 people. So if Putin says, I'm launching this, well, there's 10 people in between that. That have to say, yes, okay, yeah, that and have agree to, that with have him. to go through with it. Yeah, his like, and main so, guys. And so, yeah, so even if Putin's life, if, if someone's coming to take him out, right, or whatever the case is, there are like 10 guys in between that final decision of, hey, let's do a nuclear war. Right, and I, what are the gremlins? Are they Kremlin. Kremlin. Oh, that's the, that's the government in, in, in yeah. Russia. But there are 10, you know, high up whoever, you know, that are that are going to be probably thinking, well, I don't know that like even though, yeah, he might die. I don't know that I want to launch this nuclear attack because obviously right. you, you as 10, 10 people in between you, you're going to know you launch a nuclear attack to the United States. You know, you're, you're probably dead. And so is your yeah, family and everybody you've exactly. ever known. And there's 10 people that are going to have to decide that. Now, yeah. that's that's the reports from Russia as far as that's how their nuclear system. So oh, that up. they has had to go through the 10 people before like somewhere around there. Push 10 the people, yeah, that's what I've heard. Well, now, you know, for example, our president, the United States, uh, he's got to go God through. Almighty. Yeah, they got to put it in like numbers. Well, no, and all but that he has stuff. a nuclear football. Yeah, you know that's that's the biggest thing. That's 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 been in more movies than anywhere. The nuclear football, where a, it's essentially a briefcase to where the president of the United States always has it with him, no matter where he goes. And from what I understand, is that you know, maybe you military experts, government experts can correct me, but I'm I'm pretty sure that he can launch a nuclear strike by himself. No, I think they have to have numbers from somebody else, but I don't Let's know. Let's look it up on But Google. I mean I watch movies, so who knows? Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking about movies himself. right now. Like whenever I see a movie, it's like they have to have this code and that code to make it work. Yeah, so the nuclear football or also known as atomic football, the president's emergency satchel um, is the button, the black box, or just football, is a briefcase that uh, which the contents of which are to be used by the President of the United States to authorize a nuclear attack um, while away from the fixed command center, such as the White House Situation Room or Presidential Emergency Operations. His functions as a mobile hub in the strategic defense systems of the United States. It is held by an aide de camp. Now, that's literally what it looks like right there. It's like <laughs> a little black mm-hmm. satchel. Mm-hmm. Looks like something that they were hiding a gun to assassinate JFK. Um, and so if the U S president decides uh, to order the use of nuclear weapons, he or she would be taken aside by the football carrier and the briefcase would be open. A command signal or watch alert would then be issued to the joint chiefs of staff. The president uh, would then review the attack options with the secretary of defense and the chairman of joint chiefs of staff and decide on a plan, which could range from the launch of a single cruise missile to that of multiple intercontinental ballistic missiles. These are among the present war plans developed under OPLAN 8010. Um, and then, using Milstar, the aide, a military officer, would contact the National Military Command Center and NORAD to determine the scope of the preemptive nuclear strike and prepare a second strike, following which a Milstar advanced extremely high frequency of Boeing E 4Bs would transmit currently valid nuclear launch code to all operational nuclear delivery systems. Uh, so where a third person verification procedure is to be executed following this, mm-hmm. the codes would then be entered into a permissive action link. So it's not like a one second push the button is done. He's got to go through certain steps to launch whatever weapons he wants to launch. So in other words, if he were taken but, but hostage, says, hostage or something, and they're like, you're going to launch these now. He cannot do that without getting the clearance from the other protocol. Well, it other says steps. the United States has a two-man role in place at nuclear launch facilities. And while only the president can order the release of nuclear weapons, the order must be verified by the Secretary of Defense mm-hmm. to be an authentic order given by the president. Right. There is a hierarchy of secession in the event the president is killed in an attack. So... I mean, I don't, but I don't think it's, so once all the codes have been verified, the president may direct the use of nuclear weapons through an executive order via the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff to the combatant commanders and ultimately to the forces in the field exercising direct control of the weapons. These orders are given and then re-verified for authenticity. 
But the weird thing is, I mean, it doesn't really sound like it's, um, it doesn't sound like there's a shit ton of people. I mean, I think the president gives the orders and then all these other people, except for a they few. They have to put their codes in. Well, except for a few, they got to talk about it or supposedly, but right. I, I think that like, you know, uh, I don't it think be, it's a lot of people that yeah. have to say yes to this. Oh, well, we probably should not even be talking about this. <laughs> It has been argued that the president has almost sole authority to initiate a nuclear attack because of the secretary of defense is required to verify um, the order but cannot veto it. However, the president's authority as commander in chief is not unlimited. U.S. law dictates that the attack must be lawful and the military officers are required to refuse to uh, execute unlawful orders such as those that violate the laws of armed conflict. Therefore, the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff. So, so, yeah, there's been a lot of people argue the president of the United States can solely do a nuclear attack. And, you know, we talk about laws about like, oh, well, yeah, this is violating the law. Oh, since when does the government gave a damn about that? You know, you remember back in Hiroshima? Yeah, they didn't give a damn. They just blew up cities over there. I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things. And, and it's like, and from and, you know, when you hear about Russia, they have these people and shit. I just don't believe that as much. I mean, if the United mm-hmm. States can launch this shit solely, and you think that Russia, a dictatorship, is going to have 10 people that have to decide whether they launch this or not? But what if your president just went cray-cray and, <laughs> like, somebody slipped him a ecstasy or something? <laughs> you know, they've got to have protocol for that. If they slipped him, like, drugs or whatever. What do you mean? Like you're, you're talking about, like, the president we have now. Yeah, I'm just talking about what if they gave him, instead of his heart medicine, they gave him something that made him like crazy and like you know what I'm going to end the world tonight I'm going to push that button I don't think that could happen well the, but that's why it says like the officers are not supposed to go forward with an unlawful order right that for an oh, unreasonable so, it, so I guess unlawful means you can't be under the influence of well no I'm just saying alcohol, like if, if he's just drugs, saying launch this here yeah. but like I mean if the president of the United States is sending down orders to launch a nuclear attack and you're like a whoever I mean, I'm sure you got to be somewhat of a officer or something, you know, but still. Well, what if he was like held hostage or, you know, some kind of other uh, militia got a hold of him? I don't know. There's got to be some kind of like something in place where it's not up to him if he was kidnapped. Like, you know, you see all these movies and stuff. Yeah. I just don't think that could happen. Here's the thing. I, you know, I, um, this China... U.S. thing is definitely something that is a little scary because I just, I don't, you know, I I, I want to say this the best way I can. I do not trust at all 1% the administration or this government that we have in office right now. I don't trust them. I almost don't trust them to the point where I feel like, and it is not just because of like, you know, her visiting here or whatever. It's like I have witnessed, I think all the American people, and I think people around the world have witnessed their own governments, especially the past mm-hmm. three years, mm-hmm. do things intentionally. In, in like, I mean, mm-hmm. I, it's, I don't even think it's an opinion. I guess it's my opinion, but I, I mean, I'm saying this government for sure has done things intentionally, mm-hmm. I believe, to kill its own people. And the reason I say that is take, for example, uh, the COVID deal. And you had, you had a, a drug, which is monoclonal antibodies, that were proven like 95% effective at curing people, immediately almost. You had these monoclonal antibodies. The problem was it wasn't making a lot of people money. You know why? Because monoclonal antibodies were already around. Well, this is that was something that was already Bi- had. Is that what they gave Biden recently? Because obviously no, no, no. That, that did no, not they gave, work. <laughs> no, they gave him the, the new BS that they're trying to make shit tons of money off yeah, of. Yeah, well, it didn't work. Yeah, um, yeah Biden's got... COVID again. Yeah. He just got rid of it two days ago. Now he's got it again. But it's you, probably because of his are 18 burpee, boosters. You babe. <laughs> burpee? Yeah. I'm not burpee. You're a... <laughs> No. But anyways. Yeah, but anyways, he's got COVID for the second time. I'm not burpee. Now. What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Just no, I'm on. not. I wasn't. You okay. swallow too damn hard. Well, you I've heard that too like hard. four times. <laughs> I've heard you I haven't burp. burped at all. <laughs> I think maybe once. <laughs> No, I anyways, ate that freaking pork sandwich earlier. It's like, is that what it is? But I don't but even think. Anyways, I'm... they didn't give him that, 
So that whatever they gave him was but not effective. But my point is, is that monoclonal antibodies were proven to work and save people's lives. Yeah. You know what the government did? They took him away from Florida because Florida was using yeah. monoclonal antibodies to save people's lives. So what did the government do? They stopped monoclonal antibodies. Yeah. What, what are you pointing to your ear now? You're loud. I'm loud? Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why don't you just be the producer and since you know everything? <laughs> Huh. I get that. Anyways, but... you go ahead and finish, Sherry. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just going to be quiet. I'm because... just saying that this is what I say about the whole thing. We've got three superpowers against each other Blah. right now. No, really, it's America against Russia and China, and we better watch our shit and know what we're doing. Wow, that's, and right, that's now, right now, Nancy Pelosi decided to go to Asia. I don't even know why. Like, what? why did she go? What was the, the purpose of The point of all is, that? what I'm telling you, the whole thing I was saying is, is that our government obviously did things knowingly that it was saving people's lives during COVID. They did this. So, which means, do I, do I think and trust in the government like they keep telling people to do in the past two years? Trust in your government. Trust in your government. They don't say trust oh, in I God. Know. I they get say that. trust in your yeah. government. But I absolutely not trust in our government to make the right decisions. Number one, I don't think what we're doing in the Ukraine Russia situation is a smart decision whatsoever. We're spending ridiculous amounts of money. We're giving them weapons that they shouldn't have. We're giving them weapons that, in in my opinion, I mean, you're you're giving them now. They're begging for long range missiles. A lot of these weapons are going on the black market. We're doing dumb shit. And then, so we already know that, and now we're supposed to just all of a sudden trust the government and whatever their decision is as far as, far as Taiwan. And that's and, what and I was saying. And you're talking about like, Pelosi. Why, why, are, why are they even scheduling this trip with the Speaker of the House? Like, what does she have to do with anything? Pelosi is a ratchet, little, evil troll. Ben, she looks like a damn troll. Ben's ice cream eating machine i don't know what the hell she is but she is a <laughs> troll i mean she's an evil troll and well like, i just don't understand why they picked her out of anyone to go do well, she's this a speaker tour. of the house like I mean, well when know. did newt greenwich go or whatever newt newt when did uh, he go when did other speakers of the house go I'm to sure they did like places know. like this they probably did i don't know well but this is standing out for some reason there's no way in hell i would which, by the way, there's a meme going around because Nancy Pelosi was seen in a bathing suit on a beach, and so there's all these memes going around about how big her boobs are, and it was it was it was funny because um, were they saggy? Was, I don't remember. No, I don't. I actually kind of weren't. That's the crazy thing. And so yeah, there was a big a there was a big debate on whether they're fake or not. Oh, and so I'm sure she had a lift. Andrew Schultz. Andrew <laughs> Schultz said, "You know, as much as I can't stand her, he's like she's got some nice tits." <laughs> you know? And I was like, I don't give a damn what her boobs look like. Like, I don't care. But, but probably, at least if her plane goes down in the Taiwan Straits, maybe they can float on her boobs oh my all the God, way back Chad, to the island. Don't even say that. <laughs> that's bad. Maybe they can do it. No, that's Who bad. Knows? Maybe, maybe, it'll, maybe she can get maybe in a little bathing she, suit in front of the China. But the in, reason in why she Z. has those boobs is probably because of her hu- husband's interest in the stock market. <laughs> interest? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> interest you talking about the reason she has those boobs is because they're probably like a hundred thousand dollar boobs even though yeah, that's unheard thousand of per boob <laughs> even though it's unheard of they're like we just want to spend a hundred thousand on this because yeah, like, we've made like millions. we made millions because <laughs> of all the shit that nancy's pushing through congress and yeah i'm yeah, I, but i'm just her husband that got a dui <laughs> And the, you know the funny thing is they're trying to make that out like it's no big deal, and now yeah. they're going to pass some legislation that, like, I guess officially right. uh, members of Congress and all that can't profit off of it. But it's not members of Congress that's doing it; it's, yeah, it's their, their family spouses. members. So it's some bullshit that they want to tell the public. Oh, we're going to yeah. make a law, but it's not a law against their husbands or spouses. It's yeah. a law against them. Right. That should have already been in place. Oh, okay. And it and just I think even it goes is. with like Hunter Biden too. I mean, he's in all kinds of crap. Well, you can't, well, you can't like, you know, do treasonous things while, I mean, you can't like smoke yeah. crack and <laughs> sniff cocaine off of prostitutes. Yeah, butts. <laughs> yeah, or whatever. While also, <laughs> while also making sure that you're, you're using your dad's influence to get millions of dollars using taxpayers' money. Or, or maybe the fact that you shouldn't have pictures or, or making, um, I guess, deals on kidnapped United States citizens in other countries 
paying one hundred fifty thousand dollars for these people. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's no big deal though because Trump's yeah. bad. That's right. Biden's good. That's, that's all that matters. Right. That's right. And that's all you need to know. Yeah. <clears throat> and Nancy's not going to have any money when she's not in office anymore. She's going to be like in the same house yeah, right. with the same amount of money she She'll had. always <laughs> make money. She's always going to make money. That's the thing. I mean, look, if you hey, guys don't understand. she might make money off her boobs. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if, if they don't understand um, that, if, if no one understands that, like when people go to Congress, Senate, whatever, and, and they go in there and, and they're, you know, their salary. But then, you know, five, six, seven years later, they're multi-million. Look at the Clintons, man. Mm-hmm. They are crazy rich. And and then this is the way it is with so many people. They're dirty. They're corrupt. Yeah. Not to mention people and it's, go and it's in the in grave. both parties. It's both yeah. parties. Oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, look, we... The unfortunate thing is the system of government that we have is shit. It is the way it's operated. Anytime you give that many, there's there's never that been much more corruption power to people that want money. But we I'm have a gonna, corruption problem. I know, we do. but I'm just telling you, Chad. I'm not going to say his name again. But he had yeah, no. But, he didn't care about money. He cares about this country. He okay, took no money. I get it. But I get it. But listen, I'm not going to ask. I'm I'm not going to suck up some look. I'm not saying that he I'm wasn't good for you our country. Suck I'm up not to anybody. I'm no. saying you need somebody. Yes. that is. I would take other, Trump any day. Other over, countries are going to suck up to him. I know, and I would take Trump any day over this asshole that we have now. And he's not. He's just. He's not an asshole. He well, just doesn't he's know. He's been anything. an asshole. A lot. Yeah, he has kind um, of been. But the I guess, point is, especially to the Easter Bunny Rabbit. <laughs> but anyways, the point is, is that yeah, I would take Trump any day. I would take anybody that gives a damn. I would just take normal again. Like it is not normal anymore. Like, what we're in in this world, it's not just this country, it's Canada, it's Australia, it's everybody. Everybody is screwed. It's happening around the world. I mean, But and, we still were experiencing some kind of normalcy three, four years ago. Yeah, until... until and then happened. all shit broke loose. And now we're like, the whole world is up in, you know, I feel like we're getting a swirling in a, in a toilet right now. Yeah, by the way, you guys, know how we, you get initiated and they put your head in the swirly. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about That's that. what I feel like we're all in right now. Well, look, here here's what I will say is um I, I we posted video on our TikTok. We do have a TikTok guys. We have two videos, but we're going to start trying to post on there. Um we posted a video on our TikTok and it's um it was just about this UK veteran that he was uh being arrested for posting a meme on Facebook. A woke meme. It was like a, a, mm-hmm. a meme against woke people. And the freaking, because he hurt someone's feelings, they said, the police came and arrested him. This, uh, what, is, this is in the UK. what basis did they arrest him for? It doesn't matter. This is what we have this to understand. happening, I know. What we have to understand is this world is evolving very fast, and it's evolving to evil. It's evolving to the New World Order, the Great Reset. Look... If, if, I, listen, yeah, listen, if, listen, yeah. think about how powerful the elites are in our own countries and then think about the world elites. They are way more powerful. We don't even understand the power behind the world elites and the World Economic Forum and, and all those people. We don't even get how much power and authority they have. They have all the power, all the authority. And you know what? We are strength in numbers and, and we got we to gotta put a stop to this shit. I mean, there are... People, there are people in, in countries right now, the farmers, the, they're, they're, there are people all across these small countries that have literally way less voices, way less platforms, and way less means to even fight something that big, mm-hmm. but they are fighting it. And by the way, if, if you guys are in those countries, whether it be, I know the Netherlands are fighting hard. I mean, some of these other countries, I, I don't know right offhand, but listen, that's the shit you got to do, man. You, you got to, you got to be. You got to get uncomfortable being uncomfortable. You got if you want to, if you're going to fight. Then, like I said, these mm. people are not prominent. None of these countries are very prominent in the world as far as big countries that have huge platforms of elite people that that can can be against something like Elon was trying to do, even though they're screwing the shit out of him right now mm-hmm. because he was against it and he and he's an elite. But listen, well, what we have to understand is is that. There's there's a meme and it's the greatest meme I've ever seen and it was like four people standing up front and they had whips right and it's four people right mm-hmm. just four people mm-hmm. and then you and and these four people looked out over what looked to be millions right and all these millions were on their knees bowing to these four people mm-hmm. but then it showed another meme of these millions of people standing up tall 
Mm-hmm. You know, that's all I'm saying. They don't have it like rushing the four. Yeah, like it, it's three, just you're not gonna you you're have, not gonna you do this shit to us. You can't have the power unless we yeah, you're not give gonna do you the power. Does. You cannot have the power unless we give you the power. But you know what happens is there's another meme that shows these four people, right? These two people and these two people are 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 preaching, literally almost preaching like biblical, not biblical, but like that type of shit. They're right? not biblical. They're woke. No, but I'm but. saying is you have two people preaching on this side of the pack mm-hmm. of millions of people. You have two people preaching on this side of the pack. And then the next meme shows this millions of people not even giving a damn about the people with whips anymore. They're going right no, through no, it. No, they're, no, no. They're oh. going at each other and fighting and killing each other. Oh, and, and then at the want. end, the four people are there with a small, much smaller group. And they're like, hmm, now yeah. we can even divide you further. And it's so yeah. much easier now. Look, that's it is what, mind yeah. games, people. Yeah. It's that's mind what games. It is. Look, yes, four people are never going to defeat millions. But if you can get them, the millions divided to defeat each other, then you are always going to be golden. And you just got to stay protected long enough to make this happen. And that's exactly what's happening now. These four people, just take that in yeah, consideration. Just dividing. They're dividing the everything. millions. Yep. And then they're making these millions fight each other, not yep. the government, yep. not the four. That's what's happening, mm-hmm. and and if and if people don't understand it, I don't fucking know what to tell them, man. I, I I mean, I know people don't understand this, but it is what it is. It is. <laughs> You're right, guys. Is the U.S. China war going to happen? I don't know. Do you trust Nancy Pelosi? Hell no. <laughs> but um, we're gonna see what's gonna but, happen. Yeah, we'll know in the next like what two or three days. Well, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah we're gonna have to do another. And by the way, if something really breaks, outcome. yeah, if something really breaks on this, we're gonna we're gonna get right on here and let you know in real time. So, guys, until next time, thank you for listening to another Best Gareth podcast. We love you and peace out. Peace out, guys.
Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino online. I was only playing for fun, so winning was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's favorite free online social casino. You too could have the chance to win life-changing cash prizes. Absolutely anybody could be like Mary. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumboCasino.com and play for free now. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice of the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of the winner.